let's just talk about it like using pop culture as escapism, using pop culture as catharsis. Um, quickly, I'm going to go through the definitions to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. Good idea. So escapism, the tendency to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant realities, especially by seeking entertainment or engaging in fantasy. Uh, from our perspective, we're talking about both consumption and creation of said pop culture um, or said content, said fantasy, etc. Uh, catharsis, on the other hand, is the process of releasing and thereby providing relief from strong or repressed emotions. Okay, so they are a little bit opposite of each other, right? One is distracting ourselves from the horrific realities of which we live. Um, and the other is actively processing and being able to relieve, mm -hmm. uh, release the emotions that we're feeling that might be causing us uh, pain, discomfort. Insanity. <laughs> yeah, so experiencing versus yes. escaping. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why don't we start with what are some activities that we do for escapism? Okay, so in your daily life, what pop culture consumption or creation do you use as an escapist tactic? Hmm. Um, I have lots of podcasts lots of youtube channels about uh everything every type of performing every type of science uh, video games board games uh philosophy religion history it's like this role alternate history conspiracy theories um yeah, there there are lots of different uh avenues that I have the moment that I decide to uh escape my problems and, and i just want to think about something else yeah i have lots of options and let's be real i think you and i both are this way um when you say the moment i decide that's like the moment that there's a lack of any uh stimulus am i wrong like i've seen you at a restaurant put your earbuds in on the way to the bathroom and take them out on the way back because at least from my perspective, when I do something similar, I just cannot stand the idea of being alone with my thoughts, even for that 60 seconds. Well, it's not that I cannot stand it, but it is that I am just ravenous for whatever the thing is. Mm -hmm. Like, I, the, I am perpetually in the middle of something mm -hmm. that I would you know, like to get back to, like, you know, have documentaries open or different, mm -hmm. different shows that I, I w would love to watch or podcasts that I, that I need to catch up on and listen to. Mm -hmm. And so those like moments of like, you know, going to a bathroom or, or driving or walking, you know, different places have always been like, just like filler time to just okay plug my brain, which I is do... obviously not healthy to do all the time. I do think that I would title mine escapism when I do something very similar where you're kind of calling it like you're entering into something. I feel like I'm exiting out of something mm -hmm. during those times. Um, but I think you and I are both very similar in that. I don't like to really have much time at all that I am not having some content to keep my mind occupied uh, because otherwise, sometimes my my thought processes can start to kind of cycle in a downward spiral mm -hmm. of anxiousness. And it's just easier for me to process life if I've got somebody else's made up drama that I'm listening to as opposed to kind of sitting in my own, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you find you, you kind of gravitate more towards those more fictional stories yes. as a, or like like more of a documentary nonfiction no, much more, at least for me, much mm -hmm. more fictional. I, that's where my science fiction novels come in. Mm -hmm. That's where maybe like historical fiction or, or myth-based fiction content I will take part in that does have a, a really nice storyline. It's got deep character development that I can just, you know, kind of escape into mm -hmm. and out of my cyclical thinking that can sometimes be destructive. Hmm. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here too, but do you ever find that as you relate to those worlds that are different than your own and are outside of your own, you it kind of transforms from escapism into catharsis because you are connecting with those characters and their situations in a way that kind of reflects your own internal dynamic? I do think that can happen sometimes, but I would say the percentage of time that is 
escapism versus transforms into catharsis is still pretty heavy on the escapism for me when I'm when I'm ingesting that type of content. Mm -hmm. um, another activity that I do that's just easy escapism is just any scrolling social media, hmm. right? It's like as I'm as I'm scrolling through Instagram reels, as I'm tapping through Instagram stories. Um, those are escapism moments for me. I'm not thinking of it. The content's not even that entertaining, you mm -hmm. know? It's okay, Lacey's friends have been called out. <laughs> 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 no offense to all the people I follow. Your content kind of sucks. You know, I was going to comment on how quickly you were gesturing, yeah. tapping through everybody's <laughs> oh, stories, no. but crap, I chose crap, to crap, not. Crap, crap, crap. But here we are. <laughs> That's interesting you bring up social media because I was thinking about that too, and I was like, is that a form of escapism or is it like kind of this faux escapism for me mm. because like if social media is kind of a reflection of you know what's going on in the world whether it be twitter i think i i doom scroll twitter more mm -hmm. probably than any other social media platform um and i'm sure it varies by platform to platform but i was thinking i was like is that is that escapism or do i think it's escapism because it's like distracting me from my immediate reality of like what's immediately going around me. So mm. that's an interesting thought to ponder. That's a really good point. I think you're right. It seems way more aptly titled faux escapism uh -huh. because it does distract you from the, the cur like the literal place you're sitting in. Mm -hmm. But the content that you're being shown usually is about whatever's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And it often is very dramatic and it often is very... Um, conflict you know there's a lot of conflict happening mm -hmm. in in people's content on many social media platforms especially if you're not careful to curate your feeds in a specific way so faux escapism for social media mm, that makes really good sense mm. well mm -hmm. um do you do anything escapist yeah i guess like when i am too tired to like be creating or be engaging i like to just like immerse myself in other people's artwork other okay. than like myth and things like that and it feels like an escape because i am not having to do you know do work to create it i'm just you know relating to this um but then a lot of the times you know the the themes from those myths that i have mm, i guess engaged with in a non goal oriented way just you know just being with them then those same things when i do have the energy to be creative those come out in that kind of catharsis mm. so it, that's why i kind of i get kind of a blend between these between the two hmm. realms so instead of it being i almost imagined it like a balancing scale where it's like escapism it's that versus right mm -hmm. escapism versus catharsis it's almost it can be like a cycle yeah mm -hmm. and for example i guess like imagining ideals like that's like escapism like from our reality where there are things that are frustrating there are things that are good and bad and and beautiful and horrible and so just imagining this ideal and then when i try and put that into artwork or you know like escape to that well then that's one facet of reality and it is kind of just exploring mm -hmm. it is kind of catharsis so i feel like i don't know it can always lead back to catharsis if you really mm. explore it that's beautiful so derek i see your mind working over there what what kind of escapism do you have going on in your life i was trying to think of like what are the things i i jump to consistently because like in my mind like you jared like i have this rolodex of things that i can do I can read, I can watch a movie, I can watch a TV show, I can do all these things. But the three things that I always kind of come back to are running, coding, and listening to music. Those are okay. like my top three. Mm -hmm. So for like listening to music, that that to me is truly an escapism thing because like when I intentionally listen to music and it's not just like while I'm working or in the background or on my way to work or whatever, like I will lay down on the floor with my record player with the lights out and just listen to a little record. And that is one of the few times I can actually like shut my brain completely off because I just kind of get lost mm -hmm. in, in things and I can kind of detach myself from reality for, you know, 35 minutes. Then the running is another one. That one's kind of a mix of both. That's a little bit catharsis and a little bit of escapism because, you know, when you feel like very frustrated and like the world is just kind of working against you, like being able to go out and like just work off that feeling is really, really cathartic because you're kind of processing that. Yeah. Right. 
but at the same time like because i'm running and because i'm thinking to myself why do i do this to myself um <laughs> you know i i kind of get to switch my brain off then too because i'm really just focused on you know running reaching that milestone like what's in front of me like it's almost kind of like a zone out thing and then the third thing is with coding and that's more of a creative exercise mm -hmm. Um, I like structure. I like things to be organized and I'm particular in many ways. And when kind of there's a lot of chaos going around in my life or in the world, I find that like the very structured, organized, methodical um, world of code where everything has its place and there's, um, you know, outputs to certain inputs, like that organization is kind of cathartic as well. Mm -hmm. Um but it, it's I don't go into it saying like I need some catharsis to process the things around me. I just find that that world that is very structured, that is very organized, has a lot of predictability to it, helps me kind of turn things off and focus on you know what I can control as opposed Makes you to feel what kind I, of safe. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is, and it, it's a creative thing. And you know, designing too. I guess you could throw that in there, but code specifically. You know, Kevin and I were talking about this on a walk the other day, but talking about how you know those sorts of things and those sort of like structured environments are good to kind of like recenter yourself and tell yourself you do have control over what's around you. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as chaotic or out of your control as you might think. Mm. So those are my three. You know, um, it's interesting. The, the creative aspect of, uh, of escapism and catharsis, you know, in doing live performance and, and theater, you have in the the large way of escapism in that you are quite literally dealing with the problems of another person. You know, I, hmm. I can remember my original acting yeah. coach saying, like, you know, Mercutio is trying to, you know, save Romeo's life basically <laughs> right now. How are you going to be able to do that if you're worried about the girl from history class? <laughs> like, you... you Theater and acting is your opportunity to set your own life aside and to pick up someone else's and, and experience the, those problems. And in that same way, as with many, you know, transformative art ab about theater uh, or, or transformative art about humans, which all, all of it is, uh, you, while, while telling the story of other people, are able to learn more about yourself and about the human condition and about, about you know, your fellow people mm -hmm. Interesting. it's a little bit of a less linear way to reach catharsis maybe but is there a linear <laughs> way i don't know <laughs> yeah. if there really is it's just this uh jeremy bear me of, mm -hmm. of catharsis journey pixar seem to have found the way <laughs> mm -hmm. 90 minutes <laughs> <laughs> um when i brainstormed with uh my mom about this topic um she talked about how when she was uh, a brand new mom and had, you know, little babies and she'd have to wake up in the middle of the night to nurse babies um, in the days of the VCR. And she said, God bless the VCR. Um, <laughs> Screw you, Betamax. She would watch primarily uh, Terminator and Aliens in the middle of the night breastfeeding babies. And so immediately I was like, this is just the juxtaposition of the two <laughs> things, right? Where you've got this small vulnerable infant that you are caring for their life and you're watching Terminator and aliens. But she went on to talk about it because immediately I'm like, okay, this is escapism, right? You have to like get in an element that you can stay awake long enough to get this child fed for 20 minutes, put him back to sleep, push play on the VCR another 20 minutes, you know, just getting through it. But then she went on to talk about the stories yep, of that's where Terminator I was hoping and this Aliens. Is gonna go. Yeah. And she didn't say it exactly this way, but I, I've been processing it since we had the conversation. She was like, well, Terminator is the greatest love story ever written. She's like, I've heard her say this. she's <laughs> like, can you imagine falling in love with a picture and, and, loving that person so much that you go back in time to save them. And I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. How interesting. But then I thought further and I'm like, here she is with an infant that it is her job to love that that was inside of her that you don't even really have a relationship with yet that you see pictures of before and, they get here and Whoa. you have to you have to save them and you have to bond yeah. with them and even with aliens she's like she's like just the bonding that can happen with a group experiencing such turmoil mm -hmm. and i'm like that's that's it 
you're sitting there with your baby and it does feel like hell waking up over and over again to try to feed this baby and you're just trying to do everything you can to keep it alive and the bonding that's happening between the characters you're watching is influencing the bonding that you're having with your child up in the middle of the night um beautiful yeah catharsis that's interesting Mm -hmm. i really love that because i'm trying to trying to remember the plot of aliens and is that the one where he she has to go in and essentially rescue the girl or the little it, girl yeah uh-huh okay mm-hmm. and that's what i was thinking too is like almost like that parental instinct yes. is like this is why i get up you mm-hmm. know every 20 minutes is yes. because i need to protect my little girl <laughs> yes from you know proverbial aliens mm-hmm. rampaging i see a penetrating eye eye contact from krista oh, what no, do you I got just, i just i love this <laughs> engrossed in the story <laughs> This is fascinating too, like thinking of all of the ways that can apply and like the the loss of individuality that you experience as a parent. You go from being like, you know, an individual person to now or you are this fused thing supporting this mm-hmm. life. It's mm-hmm. just, yeah. Ah, mm-hmm. You get going on about that all day. Um, my last example, I think, from this is when I was um, in one of the hardest parts of my life and I was, uh, you know, choosing to to separate and get divorced and I spent like nine months in separate bedrooms with with my husband before we separated and a lot of people have gone through that kind of experience and it's horrible right it's just so hard Mm. and I spent almost that entire nine months in the evenings after kids were asleep I would turn on house of cards um and uh you know, Claire Underwood, her, her character, the strength, the strength, of that woman is uh-huh. beautiful. and the word that I was focusing on during that year was flexibility. So I would do yoga and I would watch house of cards. And the most, the most interesting thing about her character is that strength, but that strength comes from what I would consider flexibility. When you're faced with an issue, when she was faced with an issue, you, she never broke. Mm-hmm. There was maybe in the entire five seasons, which I probably watched every episode five times, in the entire five seasons, there was maybe two times where she broke for about three seconds into real emotion. Otherwise, she adjusted, you know, moved, adjusted, slid, mm-hmm. adjusted. Um, and I just studied that character. And so you could call that escapism, but at the same time, that study of that character changed something in me mm-hmm. on purpose. I knew what I was doing. Um, and, and it, and it worked. And sometimes I think that is how it can, how it can work the best is if we know what it is that we're trying to accomplish. Can we name what it is that we're trying to process, that we're trying to release, that we're trying to become. Right. And then it can really move from escapism to catharsis in a, in a efficient way, I think. Interesting. It's almost like when you go into, so for example, like when I listen to music, it's almost like, okay. I'm, I know I'm going to go escape. Like my intention mm-hmm. is to escape, but what am I escaping from? Yes. And it's like kind of name that thing. Mm-hmm. And then maybe subconsciously. A window opens. Yeah. And it turns into a little bit of catharsis mm-hmm. while you're escaping. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And yeah. sometimes it reveals itself to you through that process. Like you don't know what mm-hmm. it is going into it. And maybe you are in a state where you're like, I am just escaping. And then at a certain point, you can kind of realize the re like why you were drawn in that way. And it kind of reveals itself to you as you're ready for it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I need relief. And then the question, what is it I need relief from? Mm -hmm. Which once we have that realization can open that, that door, that window to actually processing what it is we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of, you know, the way a lot of, horror movies are set up Mm. is that a lot of times people are running from something but they don't really know what it is they're running for they just know it's bad Mm -hmm. and that's good enough for them to run and hide Mm -hmm. and try to fight for survival Mm -hmm. but you know as they name it you know it becomes less of a you know it becomes more real and Mm -hmm. tangible and you're able to face it head on Mm -hmm. trying to think of there's a movie and it's somebody who's listening to this is gonna know exactly what movie they're probably screaming it at me right now but (laughs) There's like one where they like, like, I'm not scared of you. Oh, it's, it's it. I'm just thinking about it, oh. right? The movie It in mm-hmm. the book It, right? Like the It is a culmination of, of each of these children's fears and it embodies those things. But the moment that they're able to name it and, you know, face that head on, mm-hmm. then it becomes a very small, 
you know, feeble creature. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's interesting. Yeah. It. Beautiful. Which reminds me of horror movies. They always come in clutch. Come in clutch. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a beautiful conversation, yeah. everybody. Thank you. Any, but any last parting words or you feel like you have reached catharsis in I this conversation? I feel so cathartic. Good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> All right. Well, if you um, have somebody who you know is escaping everything in their life and they need a little catharsis, maybe you can send them this episode. You know, mm -hmm. it's really going to help. It's going to help their life a mm -hmm. lot. Um, if if you enjoy this podcast and you haven't yet, we would love for you to uh, subscribe, leave us a review. If it's if it's nice, if not, please, God, don't. Yeah, we don't why. need more of that in this world. <laughs> Um, and if you have topic ideas or community questions that you want to include, you can go to orangenebula.com slash topics mm -hmm. and, uh, fill out our form there. We need them. You know, we don't have enough ideas on our own. We need, we need stuff we need from something. you. <laughs> <laughs> we need something tangible. And, uh, and we'll see you in the outpost community group on Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have a, have a great rest of your day, your night, your evening. We great will talk to you soon. With you. Bye. 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 Bye.